Okay, think about this. What hidden weapon can hit targets 2,000 kilometers away, totally silent, deep under the waves? What major strategic target, maybe a key port, maybe an entire fleet just sitting in harbor, is suddenly, well, vulnerable? Yeah, the shock factor is, uh, it's immense. And frankly, justified. We're looking at an unmanned underwater vehicle, a drone carrying, get this, 5,000 kilograms of destructive power. That kind of capability doesn't just, you know, threaten ships. It completely flips the script on naval defense. It forces everyone to rethink what safe even means at sea. We are talking about the Toloka family of underwater drones. It's yeah. a whole system, modular, and it is changing the game right now. And we're about to dig into the combat specs, the details that have admirals losing sleep. Stick around for this deep dive. Welcome to J&J's Military Report. Join us as we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. From fighter jets to power shifts, we break down the stories shaping the future of warfare. Right, so today we're diving into something truly game-changing. It was unveiled at the Defense Tech Valley 2025 exhibition over in Lviv. And what they showed wasn't just like one prototype, it was an entire autonomous fleet, the Toloka family. This isn't just new gear, it signals a massive shift towards autonomous warfare, maybe even bypassing those huge multi-billion dollar surface ships. Absolutely. So our mission today is to give you the strategic breakdown of this new drone family. We'll unpack the short-range TLK-200, the uh, the hybrid TLK-400 with its massive range increase, and the big one, the flagship TLK-1000. We'll get into their specific jobs and, crucially for you, how they fundamentally rewrite the rules for long-range maritime defense. Okay, let's start small. The forward scout, the TLK-200. Smallest, stealthiest of the bunch. When you hear the size 2.9 meters long, only 0.2 meters diameter, it almost sounds like, I don't know, a standard torpedo, but it's very different, right? Because of its role and well, how long it can stick around. Does small size mean it's not much of a threat? Oh, absolutely not. The TLK-200 is a specialist. Built for high-risk, close-end stuff, it runs purely on two electric motors, so it's incredibly quiet. That's its main defense, really. Yeah. It's compact, yes, but everything about it is optimized for sneaking into heavily defended coastal zones. Okay, persistence. If it's meant for infiltration, how long can it actually stay out there doing its job? The range itself is up to 100 kilometers, which is decent. But the autonomy figure, that's the eyebrow razor, mm. up to 15 days operational life underwater. So think of it less like a one-shot weapon and more like a, um, a persistent mobile sensor. Or maybe a hidden observation post. The payload is small. Yeah, up to 15 kilos. But that points straight to precision strikes, hitting one specific weak point on a pier, taking out a comms antenna, maybe neutralizing one key target in a busy harbor. But how does something that small survive when the enemy's throwing sonar pings and electronic jamming everywhere? Ah, that's the embedded tech. For navigation, sure, it uses GNSS satellite navigation. But crucially, it backs that up with AI INS. That's artificial intelligent inertial navigation. So if GPS gets jammed, which it probably will, the AI lets it keep its bearings, figure out its position based on its own movement and stored data. Very clever. Plus, its satellite link is built with countermeasures specifically against electronic warfare against EW. Even this small, arguably expendable drone is designed to fight through sophisticated jamming. That tells you they expect it to operate right in the thick of it in a really contested electronic environment. Right. That endurance and the EW resistance make it perfect for sneaking around coasts. But now the big jump, the TLK 400. This is where we go from a coastal annoyance to a serious regional threat. And that means overcoming the range barrier. Exactly. The TLK 400 is the medium range workhorse. And the big change, the strategic leap is its propulsion. It's a much bigger vehicle, 12 meters long, 0.4 meters diameter. But the key design choice, a hybrid engine system. Hang on, hybrid, that means an internal combustion engine, right? For distance efficiency. But doesn't firing up a fuel burning engine underwater just completely blow the whole stealth aspect? How do you justify that noise? That's the core trade-off, the strategic compromise they made. It uses four electric motors for the quiet stuff, final approach, evasion, maneuvering near the target, crucial for stealth. But for the long transit, crossing hundreds of kilometers of open ocean, it switches to the internal combustion engine. That combination gives it the incredible legs, up to 1,200 kilometers range, and it can stay out for up to 60 days. They accept the noise risk during transit because 1,200 kilometers, well, that puts huge strategic areas, vital choke points, naval bases, under threat in a way batteries alone just can't manage. Wow, 1,200 kilometers. That puts a lot of important places on notice immediately. And the payload jump matches that threat level up to 500 kilograms. Half a ton. What can you do with half a ton? Well, now you're talking about crippling 
larger ships, frigates, destroyers maybe, not just annoying them. Or, and this is significant, it can lay sophisticated minefields, pre-programmed patterns designed to shut down shipping lanes or seal off major ports for weeks at a time. And the targeting on the TLK-400, it's not just relying on seeing or hearing things, is it? Correct. Its versatility is a huge strength. It has thermal imagers, optical cameras, yes, both passive and active sonar. Standard stuff, really. But the real game changer is the radio frequency source targeting. That's almost a psychological weapon as much as a physical one. Wait, when you say radio frequency source targeting, are you saying it can ignore the ship itself and just home in on its electronic signals like its radar? Precisely. It can detect and track enemy radars, mm. communication signals, even satellite uplinks. So if a warship switches on its main fire control radar, boom, it just lit up a giant come-get-me beacon for any TLK-400 in the area, even if it's miles away. This forces enemy ships to operate blind or severely restrict their sensor use, which basically cripples their ability to defend themselves. That is, that's brilliant in a terrifying way. Okay, we have to talk about the Titan, the TLK-1000. This is the one that makes good on that headline we started with, the really big one. The TLK-1000 is the strategic flagship, absolutely. Yeah. It takes that hybrid concept from the 400 and just it scales it up massively for maximum reach and destructive power. It's also 12 meters long, like the 400. But the defining feature is its sheer bulk. The diameter is a massive 1.5 meters. That size difference probably explains the naming convention. You know, TLK 200 is 0.2 meters. TLK 400 is 0.4 meters. Maybe TLK 1000 refers to the payload class or perhaps a different diameter measurement, but it signals scale. Still got the 60 days autonomy, but the range jumps again 2,000 kilometers. That's serious strategic reach. But that payload capacity, we absolutely have to dwell on that number. It is the defining feature. And yeah, it's terrifying. The TLK-1000 carries up to 5,000 kilograms, yeah. five metric tons of explosive power. This isn't built to just disable a major surface ship. This is designed for the complete destruction of large, fixed targets, port facilities, infrastructure, or the guaranteed sinking of capital ships, aircraft carriers, cruisers, or devastating strikes deep inside highly defended coastal zones. Let's just pause there. 5,000 kilograms, five tons. That guarantees destruction. There's no maybe with that kind of payload hitting a warship or a hardened bunker. That alone completely changes the risk calculus for any naval commander, especially combined with that 2,000 kilometer range. Exactly. And the sources even hint at a potential, though it's unconfirmed, use as a carrier drone. Given how massive it is internally, the TLK-1000 could potentially deploy smaller drones, maybe swarms of TLK-200s or other submunitions much closer to the target zone. That multiplies the threat exponentially. But surely, a 1.5-meter diameter, 12-meter-long beast moving 2,000 kilometers isn't truly silent, even with electric motors for the final approach. What's the passive acoustic signature like? How do you hide something that big, crossing an entire ocean basin? That's where its advanced systems come in. It relies on a constantly fused network of sensors, optical, thermal, acoustic, and those AI-driven inertial systems we talked about. The drone itself is actively managing its sound signature using the environment, ocean currents, thermal layers to try and mask itself. And for communication over that vast distance, its satellite link is incredibly robust. It uses Frequency Hopping Spread Spectrum, FHSS. Basically, it rapidly changes frequencies, making the link extremely hard to detect, let alone jam reliably. And depth. Can something this big still dive deep enough to hide effectively? You mentioned hull materials earlier. Yes, and this is critical. It comes down to cost versus capability. If the TLK-1000 has a composite hull, it can operate down to 300 meters. But if it uses a cheaper metal hull, that operating depth plummets to just 30 meters. 30 meters? That's okay. shallow. That 270 meter difference is huge. A metal hull at 30 meters is vulnerable to pretty much any surface ship with decent sonar, helicopters dropping sonar boys, pretty much anything. But the composite hull at 300 meters lets it get below the thermal layer, that boundary where water temperature changes sharply. And that makes it almost invisible to passive sonar. That choice basically defines the mission, doesn't it? It defines the risk profile entirely. If you need deep ocean concealment for a long range strategic strike, you need the composite hull, whatever the extra cost. For shorter range missions, maybe closer to home waters, perhaps they'd accept the higher risk of the metal hull to save money or speed up production. It forces a really tough tactical choice based on manufacturing versus mission needs. Okay, so we've hit the attack rolls hard. The shock and awe of that five-ton payload is undeniable. But the Taloka reps confirm this family isn't just about attack. Let's shift gears slightly. What else makes these drones indispensable naval assets beyond just being, you know, underwater missiles? Right. This is where the strategy gets broader than just blowing things up. Mm. The reps were clear. 
The TLK family is designed for critical non-strike roles too, especially mine countermeasures or MCM. Mine warfare, still one of the biggest and most painstaking dangers at sea. Why are autonomous systems like these so good for MCM? Because they take the human risk out of the equation almost entirely. These drones can independently find underwater mines, figure out what kind they are, and neutralize them. This drastically improves safety and efficiency compared to sending out specialized minesweepers with crews on board into a known minefield. Drones are expendable. People and expensive ships are not. And other data gathering, what else can they do? They're also very capable acoustic reconnaissance platforms, listening posts, essentially. They can sit quietly and detect enemy submarines or surface ship movements far beyond where traditional methods can reach and they can do detailed seabed mapping. Getting accurate, stealthy maps of the seabed is vital intel for future submarine operations, navigation, just understanding the underwater environment. Things conventional ships would struggle to do quietly or safely. And all this highlights the incredible speed of development here. That's a key point. The sources mentioned that these big drones, the TLK-1000s, were basically just prototypes back in February 2025 when President Zelensky was showing them to allies. Yeah, that rapid jump from prototype to a showcased operational-looking weapon system in, what, less than a year? It's startling. It just shows how fast autonomous systems are changing modern warfare. The Tulaka family isn't some far-off concept for the 2030s. It's an active threat, a new reality that navies have to deal with right now. This kind of acceleration in naval tech really sets a new baseline for future conflicts. Which brings us to a final provocative thought for you listening out there. Something to chew on, maybe discuss in the comments. With silent drones carrying five-ton payloads to thousand kilometers, and considering the absolutely staggering cost of building and maintaining traditional warships, has the era of the conventional multi-billion dollar surface combatant, the destroyer, the frigate, has it effectively ended? Let us know what you think. The strategic impact is undeniable. The Taloka family, from that resilient little scout to the massive long-range hitter, represents a truly defining disruptive shift in naval power and autonomous warfare. It's the new reality of the seas. You've been listening to J&J's Military Report, where we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. We'll catch you next time.